الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونصلي على رسوله الكريم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما تحب وترضى لك الحمد قبل الرضا ولك الحمد بعد الرضا ولك الحمد أبدا أبدا نحمده تعالى بنعمة الإيمان ونحمده تعالى بنعمة الإسلام ونحمده بنعمة المصطفى عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا معنا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محرما برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا أقل من ذلك اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم وبارك على حبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الرحمة المهداة والنعمة المسداة والسراج المنير وعلى آله الأطهار وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك ربنا أنفسنا ظلما كثيرا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings of being in another Jumu'ah. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the connection of our brotherhood and sisterhood. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who came to bridge this gap between people and who came to restore humanity back to this humanity as it was lost. The Prophet who came when people were fighting against each other and they were torturing each other and enslaving each other and he came sallallahu alayhi wa to restore sanity to our existence alayhi salatu wasalam. Amongst those great accomplishments and achievements that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa brought to our existence alayhi salatu wasalam were happening at a time of difficulty. When he وسلم, came to the Quraysh, came to the Arab Peninsula, وسلم, idol worshippers was not the biggest problem. It was one of the problems. Shirk was one of the problems. But it also brought in a whole mirage of other pathologies and psychological and social ailments that the Prophet came to remedy alayhi salatu wasalam. The mushrikun of Quraysh, the big leaders of Quraysh knew that when the Prophet sallallahu came with this message, this meant that this is going to be the end for their shirk dynasty. It will be the end for the system that they had in place. A system that made usury halal, that made slavery halal, that made Burying girls alive, okay. A system that made people enslave each other for economical reasons. If someone was in great debt, if someone committed any theft, that system allowed them to enslave that person. It was a completely unjust system. And the Prophet ﷺ came with a change for the system. This is why they fought against him وسلم, because he came with a, with a drastic change for their dynasty. And among the things that happened was a revolution in who can be a brother with whom and what kind of ties we can bring between people. And the greatest example for that is a great Sahabi that we all know about, Sayyidina Bilal. May Allah be pleased with him. Ibn Rabah. He was a slave, and then Abu Bakr set him free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he became Muslim. As a matter of fact, Bilal in our religion is extremely important as a historical figure 
because in a sense he launched a religion with the first Adam. Bilal gave the Adam with his beautiful voice. May Allah be pleased with him. And he launched this beautiful message of our deen symbolically, but also in a very meaningful way by launching the first Adam. This is Bilal, a man of great resilience. When some of the Sahaba were being tortured, Bilal, as we all know, in the desert was saying, Ahadun Ahad. The only one I worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man of great power and resilience. Where did that come from to Bilal? May Allah be pleased with him. Where did that come from? Where did the psychological integrity come from for Bilal? Although he was a slave before that, where did that come from? It, come from, it comes from the power of Islam, but also from the power within this person. From the power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in that person, it was inherent in Bilal. Then this great figure in our Islamic history, Bilal, one time had an argument with another Sahabi, an older Sahabi. They had an argument about something not of great significance. And in the middle of the argument, that Sahabi, and some scholars say that was Abu Dhar al Ghifari. And who was Abu Dhar al Ghifari? He belonged to the tribe of Ghifara, a very well known tribe, an honorable man before Islam. But when, when he became Muslim, Islam made him equal to the next person in line. That's what Islam made of Abu Dhar. He got angry with Bilal and he said, Ya Bilal, you son of a black woman. And he said, I'm going to tell the Prophet what you just said. Because he knew that what Abu Dhar said was heavy and was serious in the eyes of the Prophet and in the, in the, in the weight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the balance is something really heavy what he said. Because that's what the Prophet came for. That's what he came for to break those social injustices. He came with the remedy for this racism that the Arabs lived in. Who do you say that to? To Bilal. The person who launched a religion with the first Adan, you tell him that? Being tortured in the desert, Ahadun Ahad, Bilal. Bilal, you call him son of a black woman. And then the Prophet ﷺ heard what happened and he came back to him. And he became very angry. And he said, Ya Aba Dhar, are you name calling him with his mom? Mentioning his mom? So the Rasulullah, we just had an argument. It was just an argument, a casual argument, and I just got angry and said that. The Prophet ﷺ knew it was deeper than that. It was just an argument. The, the argument was the manifestation. What you said was the, was the manifestation of a lurking under pathology that I came to eradicate. And you still have that in you, Abu Dhar. Although he was a great Sahaba. What did he وسلم, tell him? He said, Ya Abu Dhar, inna kamru'un fika jahiliya. You are a person who still carries within, within him the jahiliya. You still have it in you. That ignorance that I came to eradicate, to eliminate, you still have it in you, Abu Dhar. He said, Ya Rasulullah, even with my age, he was an old man. He had a gray beard. Some people say, oh, he, maybe, maybe he was a mistake. Maybe the Prophet ﷺ should have given a concession for this person being an old person. But no, no, that's really important. The Prophet ﷺ could not let that go. So he said, you are a man who still has lurking ignorance within. So Abu Dhar started crying. He knew that what he did was something grave. And he went back to Bilal, said, Ya Bilal, he apologized profusely. And he said, I'm going to put my head, my cheek on the floor. I want you to step on me, to teach me a lesson, how to be just in what I say, how to eradicate this jahiliya, this ignorance from my speech. And not only Bilal, Racism was not the only problem that the Arabs had that the Prophet ﷺ came to eradicate. But also the social eliticism that he came ﷺ to eradicate, being an elite person. And nowadays this is also a very serious problem that we have even within the Muslim community as well. Being an elitist. The Prophet ﷺ making da'wah to the heads of the Quraysh, the bigger people in Quraysh, the big leaders. 
And he was engaged in discourse, in arguments, discussions, verses from the Qur'an, trying to refute their fallacies, their questions being answered, and comes in a poor blind man to the masjid. Poor blind man. Had it not been for this incident, maybe we wouldn't have heard about his name. Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, a blind, poor man. He wasn't aware of the context, what's going on. He knew the Prophet ﷺ was in the masjid. And he came and said, Ya Rasulullah, teach me some verses from the Qur'an. And you can sense the awkwardness that the Prophet ﷺ must have felt. He was in, the, in a gathering, in a meeting, and somebody just barged into this meeting and says, recite verses from the Qur'an for me. So the Prophet ﷺ felt that that was an awkward situation, and he turned his, away from Abdullah ibn Maktoum, this blind, poor man. Because he wanted to get those leaders of Quraysh involved in da'wah. These are the big, big names. But this is a poor person. I can talk to him later on. I can divide, I cannot give him my attention right now. I have to give my undivided attention to the leaders. And just turn away from this poor person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that as he sees everything, tabarak wa ta'ala. And that could not also leave unattended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not leave that unattended. The same way that what happened with Bilal was corrected, even the Prophet وسلم, had to be corrected. The best of mankind had to be corrected. And the verses from Surah Abasa wa Tawalla and Ja'ahul A'ma, a very famous you know, surah, we all know the surah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Prophet وسلم, in a kind, gentle way saying that you shouldn't have done that, O Muhammad You turn your face away from that poor blind man and what do you know, maybe that poor blind man is better than all these heads of Quraysh. And he was, being a Muslim. So this social elitism that we still have and struggle with, being an elitist community sometimes, these racism glitches that we fall into every once in a while is what the Prophet ﷺ came to eradicate. These social problems and social injustices are the things that the Prophet ﷺ came with and that's why Mushrikun Quraysh knew that it was a grave and serious message that he had ﷺ. And a message about economical injustice and how we should break those elitist boundaries between people. The Prophet ﷺ says, that people are stakeholders in three. That's the general population, humanity. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, water resources, al-ma', nar, energy, and kala, vegetation and plantation. These three natural resources are to be shared by people. Nobody can come and confiscate these things. You know, nowadays we have all these campaigns going up you know, against Nestle because the CEO of that company Things, thinks that water is not a human right. We have the right to take, to privatize the water industry. It's, a, it's criminal. Allah made these, these things abundant, and then rich people come and steal those resources from people. Africa is feeding the world, and Africa is hungry. These are serious problems that we have, and the Prophet ﷺ came with a change for those things. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So what happens as a consequence is that we end up with two parallel worlds. The theoretical framework of our religion, we read the stories, we feel happy, we feel inspired, but then practically, we many times do not implement what we learn about in our religion. We still have in the Muslim community messages, messages for black communities and non-black communities. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. And oftentimes, we don't know about these communities. In the Boston area, we have a famous, an old masjid, very old masjid, you know, Masjid Al-Qur'an in the Roxbury area. And Masjid Alhamdulillah. We have to pray in those masajid. We have to ask about the people there. We have to join our community. We have to break those racial and elitist Fragments of, you know, these hindrances, these boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to break, tabarakahu ta'ala. The things I'm saying right now happen 
when we've all been listening to the news and seeing what's happening in the Baltimore region, in Maryland. And it's heartbreaking. And a lot of people are talking, whose fault is this? Whose problem is this? Why is this happening? Who's to blame? What are, what are these riots happening? As Muslims, what do we do for that, about that? What do we say about that? Some people say, you know, Islam is all against you know, violation of the laws and breaking of property. This is all true. Every sane person is against that. We should all stand up for those crimes. However, also Islam wants us to be just in the way we look at things. And Islam wants us to look at things from a deeper perspective. And that when we see remnants of racism and elitism, we have to attend to those problems. In one of the Detroit suburbs in Michigan, you know, at a fundraiser, people collected about $5 million. I'm not going to say the name of the city. One of the poorest cities in, in, in Michigan. To expand the masjid. Masjid expansion. $5 million. And about 50 minutes away from that mosque, there is a masjid for the black community, Muslims, who over the course of winter had you know, flooded you know, car carpets and they needed to do some fixation for this property. And they could not raise $10,000. And then we, we read the stories of the Prophet Wasallam and the stories of the zakah and we feel happy about those. But where is the practical implication of those great teachings of our Prophet ﷺ. The scholars say that the zakah was not established so that we just pay the money. It was meant to break those boundaries. It was meant to make a community of people and not two parallel communities, the rich and the poor. Islam came to bridge those gaps. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with a deep understanding and the practical implication of our religion. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيفوز المستغفرين استغفر الله. Could you kindly move forward, brothers and sisters? Jazakumullah Move forward a little bit. May Allah reward you. So the problem of poverty and the problem of hunger and the communities that dwell in poverty and hunger is a serious problem. And alhamdulillah, we live in a country where if you voice your opinion and if you lobby and if you go about things the legal way, you will be heard. Versus some of the parts of the world that if you do that, you might be arrested and put in jail for that. So we have all the right to ask questions and to make your voice heard in legal ways. The riots that happened, how do we understand those? I thought one thing we could do today is you know, just ponder upon some of the statistics and numbers about the discrepancies and some of the sufferings that happen in the black communities. And these are serious problems. And this is especially important for us as Muslims because the message of Islam is global, it's humanitarian. Regardless of the faith of that person. That's why the scholars say the charity, a zakah, could be paid to any poor human being. It doesn't have to be the Muslim person. You can pay the charity to whoever needs the charity. So unlike this common practice that most, most Muslims have, unfortunately, in this country, other countries, they send the charity back home, overseas. What about where you live? What about your neighbor, next door neighbor? Who takes care of that person? So the problems that have happened started early on in life. You know, I'm, I'm sharing some statistics with you for, for the sake of you know, enlightenment so we can know what's going on. If you talk about children and childhood, and talk about schools and suspension, about the numbers say 
that about 35 percent, 35 percent of children of the black community have been suspended or detained from school or expelled from school. The numbers are different for non-African Americans. For the white population, it's about 15 percent. 35 percent, 15 percent. Keep in mind that the black community is a minority in this country. 14 percent, only 14 percent of the total population. So this is a huge, huge discrepancy. If you come to the legal problems, if you are an African American person and you are found to actually possess marijuana, you are four times more likely to get arrested for that and to be sentenced versus if you are not African American. That's a problem. In this country, we, we have about a quarter, 25% of the world's amount of inmates. So if there are 100 inmates in the whole world, we have 25 in the US. So that's a huge, huge number. We have about 2.3 million people in jails. Two point, in this country, 2.3 million people are in jail right now. 14%, I remind you, of the population in the US is African American, only 14%. We have a million of those 2.3 million people in jails who are African American. A million people. So you see that the African American community is overrepresented when it comes to the legal system, overrepresented when it comes to arrests, overrepresented when it comes to being expelled and suspended from schools. And that's a problem. Also, when you come to food security and poverty, when we talk about households, food security within the household, the same house, in the same, uh, same household. You know, about one over four, about a quarter of the households of the black community are food insecure. One over four. Versus in the white community, it's one over ten. That's also terrible. Poverty is terrible, whatever it is. But we're talking about discrepancy in poverty. Talk about the differential between different classes of society. That's why Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, if poverty were a man, I would have killed this man. Poverty is terrible anywhere. It does not differentiate between people of color or people of different backgrounds. But in our case, we see a clear difference. There's distinction that's going on. There's a problem there. And this is where we see all these riots coming out from. Because there's a serious problem that has to be solved. When you come to children who are we talk about the households being secure and insecure. When it comes to children, about a third of children of the black community are food insecure, about a third. And the white community is one over seven. Also high, also high. And when you take, talk about poverty in general, what percentage of the black community is living in, in poverty? About 27%, about a third of them living in poverty and 10% when we talk about the white, white community. Now, this is, like I said, from a completely humanitarian standpoint, we as Muslims, we are actually asked to pay attention to all these details. And we had talked in previous khutbah about civic engagement and how we need to be part of the work being done and how we cannot just sit down and watch things happen. We have to contribute. And more than that, we have to understand and know that 40% of the Muslims born and raised in this country, born and raised in the US, are African American. 40%, that's the majority. The others are actually smaller fractions. So what we're trying to say here is that we from a completely humanitarian standpoint, we have an obligation as Muslims to read about what's going on, to understand that there is a problem there and that although the solutions might not be easy, at least we have to take our share in thinking about these problems. That's from a more global standpoint. But the more important things that we as Muslims have to be aware of are things that have to do with our daily practice and how we teach and raise our children. You know, I've worked in the Muslim community for a while now, and I worked in Islamic schools, and I work with kids and teenagers. And the problem that Abu Dharr had with Bilal is still existent in the Muslim community. 
It is still there, unfortunately. And unless we use the prophetic remedy that the Prophet ﷺ used with Abu Dhar, things will not change. Unless we implement those remedies in our lives, things will not change. We will be contributing to the development and to the greater segregation of this schism between people. Now, I want us, that, I want us to do is that we need to be cognizant of these thoughts that come to our minds. When you walk down the street and you see a person of color walking on the, sur on the curb, I want you to walk on the same side of the street. Because that's what the Prophet ﷺ taught Abu Dhar. When, he, when a woman is walking down the street and she has a purse, and she sees a person of color passing by, I don't want you to change the curb. I want to say, stay on the same side of the curb and not hold on your purse. These are difficult topics to talk about, but this is serious, these are serious problems, brothers and sisters. These things happen. And it's sad and it's hard to talk about these things. I understand that. But unless we address those issues seriously, we would be not implementing our religion as the Prophet ﷺ wants us to do that. It's really important. When we teach our kids to love people, when we greet children, and we we're happy to see children, we have to be with the same amount of happiness if we see someone, if you're an Arab, who's an Arab child, or a different kind of child. This is how deep our Islam you know, came to change us. This is the depth that we have to be thinking about. And then when we think about our community, it's important that we don't practice Islam in an exclusion way. That we are inclusive as much as possible. So to give that a practical twist, go to Masjid Alhamdulillah. Go to Masjid Al-Quran. Ask about your African-American brothers and sisters. Go to the black community. Because we, as Muslims, we are one body. This is what the Prophet Wasallam wanted us to be. We cannot live in parallel worlds. We cannot live in two parallel worlds. The Prophet Wasallam wants us to be one nation. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and make us one nation. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring our hearts together. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with a deep understanding of the religion. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the elitist mentality from our brains. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to eradicate racism from our hearts. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our brotherhood and sisterhood. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the riots in Maryland and Baltimore. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace to that region. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give ease and bless uh, the people who've lost their belongings and who've lost their property. And may Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and grant them uh, abundantly. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow justice on people who are wronged. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give wealth to the poor in those communities. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring justice to the people who were killed wrongfully by the police. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring justice back to those communities and to bless them abundantly. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqim as-salah.